Hey friends, sorry I'm a little bit late here getting started. I was already starting to um, hey write up everything on my computer so that when you go to, to stampwithdrrobin.blogspot.com, you can find all of these um, sets and what to do and measurements and such because we are going to make a fun fold card that has a lot of different pieces and I'm hoping that you don't have to watch quite so hard um, as we're making it because then you can just enjoy watching how it's done and then worry about all the pieces later. So um, anyway, this is Robin with Stamp with Dr. Robin. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in San Diego, California, where it's nice and sunny and warm and I already went for a nice swim today and had a nice little breakfast with my upline and friend Peggy Noe and we just had a really nice morning so far. So um, anyway, she and I did a retreat this past weekend using the Lights Aglow Suite from the mini catalog and we made five different cards and a 3D item and played games and people got prizes and I think it was really fun. Hi Beatrice, hi Doris, I got some people on, yay! <laughs> That means it's working, so hi guys. Um, anyway, I was talking about this retreat that we had and we played some games, a, a little word search game and a search for things in the catalog and I think everybody had a really good time. And the weather cooperated by only being in the low 80s, so that was really nice too. And I'll show you one of the other things that we made if you want to. Um, anyway, so we use the Lights of Glow Suite and we're gonna use that today, um, Stampin' Up News. Not a lot of news, same stuff going on. The celebration's going on right now, so you get free product with 50 and $100 um, spending in any catalog, any current catalog. Um, my next class is gonna be August 14th, um, and we'll be here in my house in San Diego if you are interested, or you could do it as a to-go class if you want. We're gonna be using the storybook gnomes in that whole set there. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for joining me today. So um, again, that's August 14th. And so if anybody's interested, let me know. But otherwise, let's get going making a card. So I'm going to put you down here. Hopefully that didn't make too many people nauseous. And anyway, we are going to be going through everything that you need to make this card is coming from mostly the Lights Aglow Suite. And that is on page 30 and 31 for the pretty stuff. And then the next two pages have the stamp set. So this is what they call actually a mega suite because it has everything that you need and, and two, look over here, two different um, bundles. So I'm gonna show you a little bit closer up what those things are. Okay, so sorry, I'm looking for my measurement piece and I'm not finding it. So we're gonna have to be guessing a little on, oh, there we go, never mind. Okay, so here's the two st bundles. So Christmas light stamp sets, a bunch of just really pretty stars and a tree, we're gonna be using that today and snowflakes. And then um, this is the stamp set. You can actually stamp this out. There's also this really cool um, tree that just punches out and with a lot of holes. We made this card using that not too long ago. So um, I think you guys remember how that works. And these cute, just real curvy lines and, and a bunch of snowflakes. And for some reason, a little part. Oh no, that looks like a party hat, but that's a little tree. And when we're done, I'll show you also something else I made using, using that. So that's the first stamp set that goes in this. Then the second one is the one with all the words. Um, and we'll be using some of these today also. I love this Merry Christmas, a lot of different fonts going on here. Um, just really pretty. And then the stamp set, my favorite thing is this um, sentiment or um, you can use it as a label or things like that. And again, more another sentiment for these 
um, long skinny ones and snowflakes and such and these cut out just a lot of little circles but don't the thing about these two as well as this one is they're just and the snowflakes they're not cutting out a snowflake or a circle they're actually just putting those little holes in your paper so that's something important to remember okay and then the paper which is so pretty and I think I've shown you this before but it has the gold on one side and then just pretty um, papers kind of neutrally papers on the other my favorite thing I've already bought some more of it is this glimmer paper the thing that about our glimmer paper is it doesn't come off in your hand it's not like glitter so we've got gold um, evening evergreen and vanilla and those are all you know colors that are in the paper so you want to see what we're gonna make so this is the card that we're going to make and the coolest thing about this card um, is that it's not a normal card it's a fun fold so you open it up like this you open it like this you open it all the way up and the cool thing is is that it will stand up can you see that on end and display itself it'll look like this when it's standing um, which is really cool but it folds down and this is just your regular uh, four and a quarter by five and a half page so what do you guys think? You ready to ready to watch? Hi, Vicki. Hi, Joan. Hi, Claudia. We've got a bunch of people watching today. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is do some stamping first and then get everything together and kind of make it all at once. At least that's what's making sense today. Last time with my people on Saturday, we actually made the card first and then did some stamping. But this is just a little scrap that's a half inch and we're gonna stamp our little happy holidays. Again, the, the um, there it is. The sentiments are all coming from the um, brightest glow set, whereas the tree is coming from the um, the other set that's in this. All right, so this is Cherry Cobbler. Just stamping the little Happy Holidays. And then we have a little piece for the inside. And this is two and a quarter by five and a quarter. And we're just gonna stamp that our little sentiment in the evening evergreen. And the, the only things that I put these labels on are my word dies, I mean, word stamps. Um, I don't find them that helpful in the other ones. Because this is such a small piece of paper, I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp it towards the top so you do have a little bit of room to actually write something because that's all the room you've got to write stuff. Okay, so next one is just a scrap piece that's what, um, almost three by four and a quarter of the Evening Evergreen. And this is the one we're gonna emboss on. So thankfully now I don't have to tell you that there's no embossing buddy because the embossing buddy came back. Yay, yay, yay. Um, we didn't have one for a while and now it comes in a cool little set with the little tweezers that are really cool. I did not get that set because I have my old embossing buddy and don't even understand why they got rid of it. And for those of you who don't have an embossing buddy, um, it really helps you not have your uh, verse, your ink excuse me, your embossing powder sticking to places where you don't want it. You notice I'm pushing pretty hard here. Hopefully, I don't know if you can see that. But let's get our embossing powder in my expensive Dollar Tree Tupperware thing. This is how I keep my embossing powder. I just dump it all in there. And usually I dump 
you know, when I started, I had a couple different, like t probably two containers worth and already, already down to not so much. Now this we're gonna cut out, so I'm not so worried about things that are, are going elsewhere. You're gonna hear I'm turning on the heat gun. I keep an old um, water thing around just to get like these little stray things that you probably can't even see now and are going to be cut off anyway, but it just helps with that. And then I've heard somebody else say if you go like that on the back, you don't get so much warping. What? 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 Hold on. Where are you going? This is the magic. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I still find embossing just so cool. And then you just wanna make sure the whole thing is all heated up. It's so pretty. I don't know, you, it just makes everything pop when you use embossing powder, and I don't think I use it enough. I think I, I tend to forget that I have it. So now I need my little outline of my tree. So you have that one that just makes holes and stars, and then you have the outline one that cuts everything out. And I have my little baby one. And I do have some really old washi tape. position here and I am going to use some of it hey you guys there is some washi tape in this catalog I don't know if you noticed it but it is with the um, Halloweeny stuff and it's glitter washi tape so you might want to look at that so it's got I think it's purple, orange, and black for the colors. I'm not sure. Don't call me on that. All right, so there is our little tree, and we are done with all of our stamping. So now the big challenge is there's a million pieces here that we need to put together to make this card. So I will try to go over all the pieces, but like I said, they are on my, gonna be on my blog as soon as I'm done. There's a little star, um, looks like that, the little die, that I cut out of that gold glimmer paper. I think I'm going to um, glue it on to this top here before I lose it in this mess that is my desk. and it just fits right in there. You can see the embossing around it. Isn't that cool? Okay, so we'll get that out of the way. All right, so the easiest way, see what I mean by a bunch of different pieces of paper? The easiest way to build this card is from the back forward. So the back is a piece of cherry cobbler cut four and a quarter by five and a half which you'll notice is just basically a card front size then we have this folded piece and this piece is eight by five and a half and it is scored at one and a half two and three quarters five and a quarter six and a half I'll say it one more time one and a half two and three quarters five and a half and six and a half. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it and make a gatefold card, which means you're gonna fold it in and then you're gonna fold it back. So fold the same thing on this side, fold it in. Make sure it's even top and bottom. 
and then fold it back. Now, this is kind of the mechanism of the card. Don't, in this card, thank goodness, you don't have to worry about how well this meets. It can even overlap because it's going to be covered. You're not going to see it. And if you look at the back of this, you'll see that these actually overhang that. Okay? And that's the part that's going to let you open it up. All right. So first thing is we're going to take our little back piece. And these are two strips of the DSP. Obviously, you can use any DSP you want. And they are cut th three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter. So everything is basically by five and a quarter on the big part. And I'm putting them on here, m making just a little margin around all three sides. You want that all to be even. Okay, so these are three quarters inch. I, I didn't promise you an easy card this time, so you'll notice that. Now with this card, we're going to put DSP on this and then we will we will glue these together. So first is this green sparkly gold piece and this one is I believe one and a quarter, yeah, one and a quarter by five and a quarter. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do this card is because I could use a bunch of different pieces. These two are one by five and a quarter and they're going on these inside pieces right there. So I am using uh, so four different pieces of the DSP and the cool thing is they all go together. It actually wasn't hard. I mean you could even use the other side of this and it would still look pretty because they're all in the same colors. And this is one of the best things about Stampin' Up! is how everything matches. And again, I'm just trying to center them within those folds, okay? Now we're gonna glue this piece to this piece. I found the easiest way to do it was to go like this. Oh gosh, let's use up all the glue. And then um, to glue it down like this, and you're gonna try to make sure you're kind of in the middle here. Okay, so you got the same amount showing on both sides. Okay, and you also wanna make sure that it's even on the bottom. That's more important than even on the top because you want it to be able to stand, okay? Now next thing we're gonna do is make that front piece. So this front piece of this cardstock is three and a half by five and a half, and that's the cherry cobbler again. This one is soft succulent, which is another one of the Okay, so it's the easiest thing to do is just put glue on that little part there because we don't want it anywhere else. And then you need to hold it down. Whoops, center it. Center the bottom. Make sure the bottom is even. And hold it down. You could build it from the other way. I think this weekend we built it by putting this one on first. But then you can see how it opens up. Okay, so let's put our little inside piece in. It's kind of 
kind of magical. I mean, when you first see these um, ones that are so many little pieces, you think, or at least I do, I'm not sure I can do that. But then once you watch somebody, and honestly, the person I watched was Sue Campfield. You can always go back and watch her too. Um, I These are little mini dimensionals. And then some big dimensionals for my tree. Um, I go back and watch people multiple times. So I might get it already. And then as I'm putting it on, um, you know, this is not your easiest card here. It is definitely going to take some time. If you decide to copy it, fine. If you decide you're going to do something else with it, um, take your time, you know, getting those Pick out a few pieces from a DSP that you like, that you know all, you know, come from the same suite. And you can make this anything. It obviously doesn't have to be a, a Christmas card. I'm gonna put this kind of towards the top. You can put whatever you want on the front. And then we've got our Happy Holidays, and we have another little piece of um, the Cherry Cobbler. And what I did, remember I told you these little snowflakes they don't cut out a snowflake they just do the little dots so that's what I did there I'm gonna glue down our little happy holidays in the middle whoops I think I made that a little too big I probably could have cut the edge off a little bit but I'm not gonna worry about that and then we'll get a few more dimensionals now you don't want to put them out here because these will actually stick over the the edge of the card a bit if you do. I haven't tested it to see if it's going to go through the mail without an extra stamp. It may need an extra stamp. So bring back the other one so you can see both of them, how they stand up and such, because I just think that's so cool. Because that's my favorite thing about it, that it'll stand up really well. So what do you guys think? Do you need me to show, I do have one more cut out. Do you need me to show you again how to put this mechanism together? Um, would anybody like that? I know there's a bunch of you watching, so tell me if that was way too confusing here. Um, I also, remember I told you last time I've been making these um, little sample ones so I can actually send cards, and I've made these little samples so I've written down all of the measurements for things, so it'll be really easy. And then on the back I wrote all the, the three cherry cobbler pieces here. So that'll help me when I want to make more. And it'll also help me actually send these because I find sometimes when I make these real fancy fold things that I don't want to send them because I go, oh, I'll never be able to make this again. I won't remember how to do it. But if I have these little, these little sample ones, then I can do that a lot easier. So what do you guys think? The other thing you could do, especially if you're, if you're not going to send it, is to um you could put some of the the gold pearls on here too that would probably look really cool um but i was afraid that was going to make it stick up even more um if i did that so i decided against it but obviously you could do that too so nobody is telling me that they want me to make it again so i will use my last one to make it home and somebody is going to get a, just a really pretty card. I just think this is just so gorgeous. Um, all right. Oh, I told, promised you I'd show you a couple other cards. Um, where to go? So this is another card made with the same, um, the same set. I actually was planning, maybe I'll do that today. 
I'll just put a little uh, sentiment down there. I was trying to use the little, little teeny um, Christmas card, uh, excuse me, Christmas trees that came in there. And I thought, well, what if we make a pretend snow globe? So I just cut a circle out and used the, the acetate. And so there's our little, our little Christmas scene. I think these little snowflakes are so cute. So that's another fun fold that we could do a different day. And then one of the other things that we did, um, thank you, Vicki, is we made one of these bags. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to find. This is one of those things that's in this little mini catalog that I think a lot of people are missing. It's on page 35. It. Okay, so see these little mini treat bags? They come like this. There's 10 of them for 10 bucks, so they're only a dollar each. And you really don't even have to put them together. All you do is, is unfold it. And what I did is I stuck the um, some of this free celebration paper inside. Um, I actually just use one of the stars for a hole and, and punched another hole in the back so you could have a little ribbon here. And then remember that tag that I showed you in the labels of glow? This one right here that I said, it's just it's such a pretty, you know, obviously you could just take this and stick it on a card like that. Um, and then I used one of the, oh, I forget what it's called. It's the set that just has a whole ton of tags for the back of it. But isn't that cute? You could also use these for Luminaria, you know, put a electric tea light in there. And then I have one other one that we made. And um, hey, Lisa, you kind of missed the whole thing though. So here's the, the um, cards that we did. And you can go back and watch it. Lisa was my one of our little helpers this weekend, so she didn't get to make cards. So she's looking at a pile of all these little pieces going, what the heck am I supposed to be doing here? So Lisa will have to go back and watch again. All right, so I'm gonna put you back up. And if you wanna make this card, just feel free to watch it a few times. Go over to stampwithdrrobin.blogspot.com in an hour or so, and then you will know how to make this card. So thanks everybody, and I will see you next week at one Pacific time. Take care, bye.